What's going on guys? Today we're going to be continuing our series on Bash. So in the last video, I mentioned to you guys how in Linux, everything is considered a file. But another important concept in Linux is that since everything is a file, every file is going to also have file permissions. So if we do ls hyphen l, we can see all of the files and their permission settings over here on the left, but I'm gonna go ahead and demystify what all of these letters mean for you guys. So the R means that this file or directory has read permission. So read permission means that you can view the file, like if it's a text document, you can open it up and read it. If it's a MP3 file, you can listen to it. If it's a picture, you can view it, etc. cetera. Uh, but you can't modify it. You can't delete it. You can't move it. The W means that you can do those things. So if it's a text file, you can delete text from it, add text to it, you can delete the whole file, you can move the whole file, so on and so forth. And then if it has X next to it, that means that you can execute this file. Now, X typically doesn't get set by default for most files in Linux. Usually it's something that the user has to modify on a file itself. And this isn't going to be present in a lot of files because since X means you can execute it, it has to be a file that actually has something that you can execute. Like you can't execute a text file, but you can execute a shell script. So that's what this is. Um, I don't think that there's actually anything inside of it right now. Yeah, it's empty. So even if we execute it, it's not actually gonna do anything. But um, that's what the X means, that you can actually run uh, whatever this file is. Now, you see it repeats these letters three times. And that's because these are different user, I mean, not different permission settings. So the first column is the permission settings for the user. So. My current user is Kenny at Kenny Desktop. Uh, if I was to become root, this should show me something slightly different. Uh, actually, this guy doesn't have the permissions to become root, uh, so I can't show you that. I think, actually, no, I should be able to do sudo ls l. Uh, never mind, it's showing the same things. Um, but anyway, this is what the current user has access to. If I had a different user to log into on my system, then it would show different permissions for that user. Then this column over here, that is the permissions for the group. Now, the reason that there's all these different permissions set is because the way that the original Linux philosophy was sort of devised was for it to be based on this system called Unix, which was typically used by universities, banks, and enterprises. And it would be a system where you would have a mainframe that actually had all of the files, all of the folders on it. And then you would have several different people throughout the school, students, administrators, teachers, etc., all connecting to it and all creating their own files, compiling, executing, reading, etc. So because all of these different people were accessing it, that's the reason why we had to be able to set these very tight and very granular file permissions. Uh, so the group, the setting for that, say you had an enterprise environment where you had an accounting department and you have a sales department and you have an IT department, all these different departments. 
it would be really cumbersome for the folks over in IT to have to go through every single user in the company and manage their permissions on a per user basis. Because say for example, you have somebody in the accounting department and instead of just giving the whole accounting department access to what they need to access, we decide instead to set this on a per user basis. So we have a user, John, in the accounting department who has read and write access to all of accounting's files, but it's set on his user instead of being set on his group. Well, let's say John wants to transfer into the sales department and he does that successfully. Well, IT would remove John from the accounting group because he's no longer an accountant and they would put him in the sales group. And because he's now in the sales group, he has access to everything that sales has access to, or at least everything that that group has access to. But because his accounting permissions were set on his user instead of on the group, he's still going to have access to accounting's stuff so he can still view payroll information, tax information, but he's not even in that department anymore. So that's the reason why we have the group permissions. And then this over here is the permissions for everyone else. So if someone who is, uh, say, a new hire or maybe someone is a guest at the company, you know, they're not actually... Uh, a user that has things set up, they're not in any particular group. This is just the settings that everybody else gets access to. Now, of course, like I mentioned, you are able to change these permissions. And the way that we would do that is with the command chmod. Now, chmod has a couple of different ways that you can run it. You can run it with numbers, which is a little bit confusing, uh, but I'll try to remember the number schemes. So let's say that I wanted to make ex5.txt I wanted to make it so that everybody is able to read and write it. Uh, even the group that is the other group. So the way that I can set this is chmod ex5.txt. Actually, I have to put the setting before. So chmod 666ex5.txt. Now, what this means, the six represents read and write access. And we did three sixes because we're going to allow read and write access to the user, to the group, and for everyone else. Now this already has read and write access for the user and for the group. So when we run this, it should only modify this last column here. And we see sure enough, it did modify that last column here. Now another thing that we can do is we can run the same command, but instead we'll do 777. So 777 means that you get to have read, write, and execute permissions. So when I run this, uh, it's gonna do a couple of things. So for one, it should make that file become green. Yes, because in my bash RC, I have it set up so that anytime a file is executable, it just marks it in green so it's easier to see. Uh, but you see now it has RWX, RWX, for all of these different users. Now, of course, remembering all these numbers is a little bit convoluted. I mean, even I have to follow a guide to be able to remember what everything is. 
Um, a different way that you can set this is with letters and it makes a little bit more sense. So let's just clear and then do another LSL so we can see everything. So the way that we can do this with letters is chmod and then let's say that we want to change the groups permission and we want to take away their ability to execute. So the syntax for this is chmod, the group that you want to change, which in this case is group, but you could do the same thing, u for users or o for other but we'll keep it as group now, and minus, meaning that we're going to be taking away this particular permission, and then X, which is execute permission. And then we specify our file, just like with the numbers, ex5.txt. And so now if we do our LSL, you see that the group no longer has execute permission for ex5.txt. And like I said, we can do the same thing for the group. I mean, we can do the same thing for the user. We can do the same thing for others. And now this file is normal because it no longer has execute permissions for anybody else. Okay. So that is how file permissions work in Linux. Let me know if you guys have any questions below. Feel free to leave them as a comment and I'll be sure to reply to them or somebody else will reply to them if they're faster than me. Make sure you give this video a like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Peace out.